Okay, here are solutions to problem 19 off the GRE subject math practice exam. In this problem, we're evaluating this limit, the limit of a complex variable. Uh, we're looking at the limit of the quotient of the square of the complex conjugate over the square of the complex number. Uh, so let's see, if you think about your complex number, maybe let a plus bi represent it, then the first thing you need to know is that its complex conjugate is just a minus bi. Probably not anything new to anybody watching this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and calculate or come up with expressions for the square of those two numbers while I'm here. So this thing squared, I get a squared plus 2abi plus b squared i squared, aka a squared minus b squared plus 2ab i. Here's the real part, there's the imaginary part. And if I square the complex conjugate, I get almost the same thing. The only difference here is when I'm foiling things out, I'd get minus 2abi. So I'd still get a squared minus b squared, except now I would get minus 2abi. And so really what we're figuring out in this problem is, here's maybe a visual representation, is z is a complex number. It's somewhere in this complex plane, and it's approaching 0. The challenge is we don't know where z is or how it's approaching 0. So maybe it's approaching along this axis, for example. Maybe it's approaching along this axis. Maybe it's coming in diagonally. Maybe it's doing none of that stuff. Maybe it takes some wild path like this and eventually works its way down to 0 here. We don't know any of that. So you want to keep this as general as possible. I mean, mathematically speaking, you want to. But for the sake of solving this problem, you can just consider some cases. Right? And that'll work on a lot of problems like this. Um, figure out the limit if you come in on this line, or if you come in on this line, or if you come in on this line. And if you just get two different answers, then you know the limit doesn't exist. And if all of those end up being the same answer, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that that's the limit because you'd have to check every single possible path. You'd have to consider a more general case. Uh, but it gives you a pretty good feeling, maybe for the sake of a test like this, when time is such an issue, you might find it sufficient. So the way I would solve this problem, or the way I did solve this problem, um, is considering a couple of cases. So maybe first, let's think about if z is real. So if z is a real number, then b equals 0 in these cases. So the square of the complex conjugate here, really I could write this limit as, it's just the limit as a approaches 0, because all the b's are going to be gone, of, and then I'm going to stare at this thing where all the b's are 0. So I got a squared minus, minus nothing, right? Uh, and then I'm going to look at this thing where all the b's are 0, and I'm going to get another a squared. Uh, so this is just the limit as a approaches 0 of the number 1, which is just equal to 1. If z is a real number, we don't know that z is a real number, but if it is, we'd get this limit. What that immediately tells us is that that's not the answer, that's not the answer, and that's not the answer. Our answer is either b or the limit does not exist. And the way we can determine whether it's b or the limit does not exist, well, we can guarantee the answer is the limit does not exist if we can find a path that gives a different limit. So maybe the next thing you check is z imaginary. And this analysis will be very similar, except now all the a's are already 0, so I'm just looking at the limit as b approaches 0. And if I stare at which one went on top, this one goes on top, except all the a's are equal to 0. I get negative b squared, um, and that's it, right? This goes to 0. And then if I stare at this thing with all the b's, or all the a's as 0, I get again negative b squared. So this limit is also equal to 1. So you're starting to feel a little bit better about this answer, um, which is dangerous because that's not the right answer. Um, you might consider another case. What if we take like this diagonal path in right here? What if we uh, let, maybe this is in a different color, what if we let a equal b? All right, so then what I can say is I have the limit as a approaches 0 of, and everywhere I see the letter b, I will just change it into an a. So here's what goes up on the top. I got a squared minus a squared. That's just 0. Minus 2a times a i squared. So minus 2a squared. Sorry, minus 2a a i. So minus 2a squared i. And then the denominator, I'd have this thing here, except everywhere I say a b, I'll change it into an a. So a squared minus a squared plus 2 times a times a times i. So I get positive 2a squared i. And all of a sudden, this limit's equal to negative 1. Wait, the limit equals 1 in some cases, negative 1 in other cases. What that means is that the limit does not exist. 
I imagine people are going to have a argument with this video. They're not going to like this way of solving it. They're going to say, well, what if on a different problem, I considered all three of these and it just so happened that all three of those were one. That doesn't tell me that the answer is one. It just makes me feel better about one. That's, that's totally true. Um, I'm sure there's a more general way of solving this. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Maybe you let your complex number be what cosine theta plus r cosine theta plus uh, r sine theta times i. And maybe you let r approach zero. All right, so now we're saying we have any complex number. Um, don't want, I guess if you made theta a constant, you could be talking about taking some path in here, although that doesn't even consider all cases either. You want to be able to take any path you want. Uh, so maybe you have to let theta be a variable. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a way to solve this more generally, and if someone feels like pointing it out, they could. Um, but I think that this is sufficient on problems like this. If you check it several different ways and you're getting the same answer, you feel pretty good about that answer, call that your answer and move on. That's what I'd do anyways.